Hi folks, today's video is a review of the new setting book, The Moangi Expanse for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Pathfinder sent over a courtesy copy for us to review, and here are my thoughts on it. Uh, first of all, I'm going to apologize if I butcher any of the names. Uh, I've just read them. I have not heard any of them pronounced out loud, so I'm doing my best. <laughs> the Moangi Expanse is a new setting book for Pathfinder 2nd Edition that I think is absolutely fantastic, uh, and I'll get into some more details later on, but it is clearly a, a setting book that is influenced by a whole bunch of different African um, cultures and societies, and I think it's really cool, really exciting to see a new campaign book that is not just like fantasy Europe. Um, it's really nice to see, you know, a li lot more diversity in the kinds of fantasy and also the kinds of stories we can tell in our role-playing games. One of the first things that really stood out to me about this book is on page seven, they have a little sidebar that's called uh, Exciting Not Exotic. And I think this particular sidebar especially um, reminds you that just because it's new to you does not make it exotic. It's just different than what you've experienced. It's based on somebody else's experience and, you know, treat it with respect. And that's something that I feel like a lot of this book, it really does um, approach it in a very respectful, a really nice approach. It doesn't feel kind of appropriating. It does feel like it's written kind of by the folks who live in this culture. And there's another sidebar that also provides good kind of questions to ask yourself if you're coming into this region as an established adventuring group that you are outsiders of things to kind of remind yourself, which I like because especially since Pathfinder 2nd Edition has been out for a while, you might have a group that you want to now explore this new region, have some adventures and uh, intrigue in this area, um, but you know, your established characters so how are you going to be treated? How are you going to approach these different regions? Within this region, there's a wide diversity of different societies and different cities, um, which I think provides a really great opportunity that you can have a wide variety of different adventures, um, whether it's that you choose to run a campaign that is more focused on intrigue, polit politics, um, trading, stuff like that, or the more kind of classic dungeon crawling of instead of, you know, taking place in a dungeon, taking place in the jungle of trying to find a mystery and defeat the monsters uh, and just generally survive. I also appreciate that in the book it introduces the idea of perhaps um, using this campaign setting as an opportunity to explore ideas such as oppression, colonization, globalization. Um, it just is a nice acknowledgement of like what's going on in our real world uh, can tie over into fantasy if you want to use that um, opportunity to explore some of those themes and you know, but you don't have to. <laughs> So once you get past kind of the introduction to this region, to this campaign setting, it gives you a really great um, overview of the history. And I like that there's like a quick timeline, but then there's also uh, sections that kind of go over each age, uh, important events that happened, key people. Uh, it really helps kind of bring the world alive when you do have a history behind it. But I do like that it doesn't give you like, you know, it's not 200 pages of history. It's just enough to give you an idea and then you as the game master or players can kind of um, expand out from there. It gives that kind of like little drops of ideas uh, and a framework to work off of. A good section of the book is dedicated to the people of the Mungai and it starts out by kind of going over the various groups. My at least reading of it was these tend to be the more um, human groups <laughs> of the people. And then it goes on to offer um, additional kind of uh, details on various uh, ancestries, heritages um, that are both based off of the other ancestries and heritages in the core book, as well as introducing some new ones. So within these, it goes into the appearance, the culture, the uh, relations with other groups. I really like that because, you know, it provides those cool 
um, interconnection really builds out a, a real world that it's not just, well, this group does, has their own thing, but how they relate to each other. It goes over like faith, uh, where they are in the world, provides some examples of like significant artifacts and places like cultural artifacts. And then there's also a new NPC for each of these new peoples. So there are three new elves, two dwarves, a halfling, and an orc. Uh, kind of for these are the kinds of people you can find in here. And then the new ones are the Anandi, which are spider people. So cool. So cool. I kind of want to now have Nyx and meet them so Nyx can meet spider people. Um, uh, they can also assume a humanoid form. There's the Kanrasi, which are constructs. Um, really an interesting kind of construct. Um, not like, not as humanoid as other uh, kind of um, constructs tend to be. Uh, there's gnolls, which uh, are very similar to gnolls, regular gnolls. <laughs> um, the galoma, which I don't really know how to describe. Um, they're very interesting. I'll throw a photo up here. Um, yeah, these are very, I, I don't, I don't have a reference for these, um, but I'm sure they are based off of something that I just don't know about. Um, and then there are the Gripply, which are a kind of frog folk type folks, and then the sh Shisk, which are um, kind of humanoids with bony quills out uh, as far as the appearance goes. And so for all of the um, ancestries and heritages that exist in the other Korra rulebooks, you'll refer to those for the stats, um, but it gives you a lot of more of the cultural side of things in this book. And then for the new ones, it does have all the stats for those. I want to give a special thanks to all of our patrons, especially Arvi. If you want to support our channel, you can head on over to patreon.com slash initiative and check out the perks of being a patron. Back to the review. Then it goes into all the different religions uh, as well. There are 12 new ones and then um, it says which uh, religions from other regions also exist here and have a following. The geography section um, really gives you a good idea of just the vast diversity of kinds of geography and land in this region. Um, you know, it all kind of has very similar temperatures, um, but there are different weathers depending on where exactly you are. Um, and all of them kind of give you an overview. They list significant places within each of these different um, subregions. And reading through this section, I really got a good sense of just kind of how how many different um, scenarios you can throw at your players, different, um, you know, environmental hazards or opportunities for different um, cultures and uh, exploration. Um, I think an exploration focus campaign in this setting would be really interesting. Um, just getting to describe all of these different locations uh, that aren't just like forests or plains, but you have these like crystalline structures and different kinds of mountains and desert and jungles, some really interesting jungles in there um, that just exciting and uh, for me really sparked a few interesting ideas for, oh, this would be interesting to have this kind of adventure hook that's set in this sub-region or um, oh, I could send, you know, uh, maybe a side quest that focuses on this sub-region or going to this one location. Um, you know, there's, I feel like the, there's a lot of kind of inspiring ideas for game masters. So especially if you're kind of maybe feeling a little stale with your ideas, this is a book to pick up to spark that creativity. And there are nine detailed uh, cities or city-states uh, in the geography section. Gives you the stats, a map with notable locations, and then the notable locations have brief descriptions as well as like the um, main NPCs for that city and what the culture is like, what everyday life is like there, what the um, trade or main kind of source of income is, 
government, again, a lot of different inspiration, um, a lot of different opportunities for if you don't want to have a campaign that's fully focused around kind of one theme, you could explore a bunch of kind of little mini themes, uh, whether it's exploration or political intrigue or spying, uh, trading, just general adventuring. Uh, there's a lot of different kind of places that you can get to within this region that will provide locations for those themes. And then finally, the book wraps up with the bestiary. I know I said that wrong in a previous video. Bestiary starts out with a list uh, that gives you all the different creatures that are located in this region that are from other books. And I like that it tells you what book it is and what page so it's easy to find. Uh, and then it gives you uh, 15 new creatures that are very specific to this region. Uh, and a couple that I really like is the Groot slang, which is um, just, it's a giant elephant serpent. <laughs> like, <laughs> throw that at your party and they're going to just, ah! <laughs> the Kanana are really interesting. They're half people. Um, and, and by half people, I don't mean like short. They're just like the right side or the left side. And this like, again, spark of creativity idea, like, I could see a really cool either campaign or subplot to the campaign kind of focused around this creature. Another just kind of terrifying thing is the Malady, Mal Maladi, uh, which is a giant flaming hippo. Yep. <laughs> and the last two, the Solar Ibis and the Zimba, um, again, these are really interesting creatures that aren't necessarily just, I'm going to throw this at my party for something for them to fight, but could be uh, creatures that they are seeking out because they need a uh, resource from it, or they are sent on a quest to try and find them as a sign for fill in the blank. I always appreciate when we get uh, creatures in the bestiary that aren't just a uh, adversaries or opportunities for fights, but provide um, different kinds of quests, or perhaps maybe even allies that you can add to your party. As always, the artwork is stunning. This particular book is just gorgeous. I appreciate the amount of visuals and the amount of artwork, um, because that really does help bring a lot of these different locations and people to life. Um, and even you know, there's such a diversity in the looks of the people that helps kind of remind you that this is a huge region. Uh, there's a lot of different peoples and cultures. It's not homogenous. Um, each group has its own unique style and um, culture and look to it, while still having all the artwork feel very cohesive and part of the existing Paizo Pathfinder world. It is a really great, cohesive, well thought out setting. Um, so if you're looking for a new region for your adventures to explore or a new place to set your Pathfinder game in, uh, I, I think the Mwangi Exp Expanse is one of my favorite books that I've seen Pathfinder put out recently, so go check it out. I'll put a link down to it in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you hit like and don't forget to subscribe because we make videos here every week all about tabletop RPGs and our other geeky interests. All right, I'll see you next time on Roll for Initiative. Bye! Do you seven? Did I count that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine.